will welcome to the Global Prayer Storm podcast as I do one of these for every month. And this is obviously James W. Gall with God Encounters Ministries, where God Encounters are for everyone. And yes, God Encounters are especially for you. They really are. And as I mentioned here at the very opening, once a month, I do a Prophetic Encounters podcast, and once a month, I do a Prayer Encounters podcast. This one is one that complements our global prayer storm efforts. Did you know that we have a every Wednesday at noon Central Time that we have a live prayer meeting that you can participate in. It is held at God Encounters Facebook and James Gall YouTube on every Wednesday at noon Central Time. Now, of course, about 50% of the people that participate are timing in, clocking in from at least 50% of the people from many nations from around the world. And so some of them are getting up, you know, at 3 a.m. Some are staying up till 1 o'clock. But you can watch and pray at any time you want at any place in the world because these are posted and then you can pray along with our themes. And then we also use a program where there is chat. And so you can enter in there and participate there. And we also have a, uh, for those who are like, let's say, dedicated to be a participant with us in the Global Prayer Storm, go there at globalprayerstorm.com and you can sign up for a dedicated email list that it would be a sub list of our greater godencounters.com larger list. Okay, so I think that many of you would like to probably participate in this. And because it's really wonderful. And we pray along in our global prayer storm themes, and we specialize. And we pray in these themes of revival in the church, the greatest youth awakening that the world will ever see. We pray into governmental intercession. We pray for Israel and all of the descendants of Abraham, and a couple of other key points. Okay, so this is my podcast for October of 2024 for the Global Prayer Storm. And uh, I, we, are doing a uh, re-emphasis on the triumph, your comprehensive, uh, the light sitting it kind of funny, the triumph, your comprehensive guide to spiritual warfare. And there's a reason why we are going back and looking at this again, because we now have the entire curriculum kit that is available. So we have the study guide. So what comprises the curriculum kit, you asked? It is the book and then a study guide. So the study guide is entitled Mantled for Victory, the study guide of the triumph. And these are some of the most thorough of any study guide materials that you will uh, come across. And so a book and a study guide is partnered together then with the online classes that I have taught. And they are then available 
then the classes in a download form in an MP3, that means audio, or an MP4, that means video format. And so I want you to know that because we are making a really good deal for you. And I am looking for something called facilitators so that there could be a point person that you could purchase the entire kit and then you host then a, a Bible study in your home or maybe online yourself. And then we can arrange discounts, a small level discount, but we can, for some of the books and the study guides. But everybody then doesn't have to purchase the MP4, MP3. You do as the host in your home. Have people over. Okay, so there you go. So we want to launch these facilitators. But for right now, I want to reintroduce the triumph and the study guide and the online class of Mantled for Victory. So this session is going to be on, listen to this, go on the offensive. As I have prayed about this, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me that to be effective in where we are headed in the body of Christ, we, it's great. You've got to maintain your own individual devotional life with God. But to be victorious and to take territory where we are headed, we must, some of us, learn to go on the offensive. Some of us must relearn to go on the offensive because some sectors of the global prayer movement and the church and the body of Christ has become way too passive. We've almost become neutered in a sense. I love devotional dimensions. I love this, but Listen to this thought. We'll pray. I'll give you the theme verse, and we'll jump right in. How much, I'm going to give you a question, a rhetorical question. How much, what does it mean when Jesus said all? Simple question, isn't it? What does all mean? So when Jesus said, behold, I give you power, he said power, and authority. He said power and authority. He didn't just say, I give you power, and he didn't just say, and I give you authority. He didn't say, you have to pick which one's going to be. He said, I, behold, I give you power and authority. And Now listen to this over all the power of the evil one. How much is all? We act like you only have... How about this? We act as though Jesus said only the elite have all power over all the weapons of the evil one. That is not what Jesus said. We act like Jesus said, believe me, I've been involved in these realms for, I've been in full-time vocational ministry for 50 years. I've been prophesying for 52. We act like as though that this is an elitist teaching and we act like as though, behold, I give the apostles power and authority over all the powers of darkness. 
and behold, nothing will harm you. That isn't what it says. That is not what Jesus taught. Now, we have to put a, a context of who is it that Jesus is addressing. I have chewed on this a lot for many years. And then I decided to step back away from all of the controversies and the theological debates and then just look at it again. Whom is it that Jesus is addressing? Disciples. So I have another question. Are you his disciple? Now, if you are not his disciple, I want to make an interjection and say, I don't know if you do have all power and authority over all the powers of darkness. Not actually, because you have something in common with the enemy. But when Jesus is Lord, and he's Lord over all, you are his disciple. A lot of people are believers, but they're not disciples. But when you are a disciple, like Jesus was addressing, behold, I give you power and authority over all the I hope you're starting to grasp where I'm going to try to go. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing in any means can harm you. Now you say, but James Gall, who are you to be talking about such a ultimatum when your life has gone through so much hell that it has? Oops, I said it. I will not let the things I have suffered lower the bar of the words of Jesus. Mm -mm. No, no should you. We need to let the word be the word and then let our experience let this become something that our life experience gets drawn up to. At least. Now, sometimes I want to try to give up, but I can't. Because winners aren't quitters. Okay, I think we need to pray and we need to, like, move on. And suffering is a part of the kingdom, might I add. Father, thank you for this glorious, amazing, wonderful time. It's just going to be filled with wisdom and insight and at the same time filled with the spirit of faith. And faith fights. And I'm asking for your help of articulation and communication of the two-edged sword of the Spirit that cuts one way and cuts another. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding this time. In Yeshua Jesus' mighty, great, and maximus name, amen, amen. Well, as we've entered into this new year of 5785 in the Hebrew year, I just believe that God wants us to get renewed. And he wants us to be renewed in him. He wants us renewed in his word. And he wants us to understand that storms are coming and storms are already here. And perhaps even greater storms are on their way. Well, that's a really encouraging word. Prophet James Gall, which I don't normally reference myself that way. But it's in the Word of God. I haven't said anything that's not it. I, the, the subject lines that they are not in the Word of God. But we need to get prepared. So let's look at some of this, these issues of 
his triumph. And we are invited into his triumph. Yeah. So my theme verse for us is from that whole wonderful passage in the book of Ephesians where Paul the Apostle is writing to this spirit-filled group of the people at the church of Ephesus. And he's writing them as a reminder to put on the full armor of God. But I just want to talk with us, share with us about one dimension of this, maybe two. I want to talk about going on the offensive. Or how about this? You have a fire extinguisher. You have a what? You have been given a fire extinguisher. Well, I thought that we were supposed to be on fire. I thought that you were the one that quotes about John Wesley, that what was his key? And he said, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. That's true. But in the book of Ephesians, in the sixth chapter, in verse 16, from the New American Standard Version, which I memorized more from than any other probably translation, it says, Ephesians 6, 16, in addition to all, oh, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith. So, how many of you want a fire extinguisher. It's the shield of faith. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you are able to extinguish all, all, not some, not occasionally. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, taking it up. It's not supposed to be sitting by your side. Taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amazing. From the Passion Translation. And wouldn't it be, it's be wonderful to look about 10 different translations on this? Ephesians 6.16. 6, In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Wow. I'm going to read that again. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Now, here's what we must not be in denial concerning. Fiery darts, blazing arrows will come at you. At every disciple, no matter what level you are, no matter what gifting you are, Fiery arrows, blazing arrows, will come at every disciple. 
because it says, it says so. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. It's a part of the battle. We are called to enforce the victory of Calvary. You have your battles. I have mine. There are some we are called to fight together. And there are some that you must learn to take a stand and stand firm. That I can't fight for you and you can't fight for me. We can fight together. But you must learn. We must learn. I must learn to take up it's n you're not automatically dressed. You're not born in this armor. We have to put this armor on. And we have to take up this shield of faith every day. By which then we are supernaturally grace-empowered, enabled to extinguish, you have a fire extinguisher, to put out the fiery darts of the evil one that are shot right at you. Uh -huh. So let's look at this a little bit in this study guide. What are the missiles? Missiles. Oh, did you know that one translation uses that word, not just darts? One translation uses the word missiles. Hmm. What are these missiles, darts, and arrows of the evil one? These arrows come as sudden and unexpected interruptions in our mind of vile images and thoughts that shock and surprise us and are obviously and undeniably contrary to our basic desires for godliness. These arrows can also be words and pictures that disgust us and violate your God-given sense of propriety and morality. Some examples are blasphemous thoughts about Jesus, revolting images of sexual perversity, suicidal urges, compulsive thoughts of harming family or friends, unaccountable impulses to rebel against God, subtle insinuations against God's character, and well, listen to this. If you haven't connected on any of the rest of what I've said, subtle insinuations against God's goodness, false feelings of guilt, exaggerated feelings of guilt, condemnation. Frequently, people report th things to occur while reading the Bible. Did you hear me? Frequently, people report to having images, hearing things, certain sensations, etc., when attempting to read the Bible. Not newspapers or magazines. While praying or while praising God, this aggravates feelings of personal guilt and worthlessness insofar as such occasions are regarded as spiritual. What kind of person am I anyway? 
that I would have such thoughts of fantasies or at precisely the time that I should be loving and worshiping God. At such times, we are actually walking through a mental minefield. Did you know that one of the times that you're the most resisted is the time that when you are attempting to spend time with God. One of my mentors in prayer, Dick Simmons, said, time spent with God is not time wasted. It's time gained. That's why it's so resisted. Did you know that one of the arrows that can come is called distraction? Busyness. Things of good things to do. Now, that's a whole other thing. I'm going to have to let it go because my teacher wants to rise up, see, on how to deal with a busy mind. Now, uh, let me turn to uh, my, my, my book, The Triumph, and read a little bit because it's going to be so important to understand because it's taking up the shield of faith by which we are able to extinguish, you have a fire extinguisher, to extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. But we need to understand this type of shield of faith. So I did some research, obviously, you know, to do this material. The Flaming Arrows of the Evil One. So there's, you know, three types of faith, but I'm going to push pause there. And I might need to do a whole nother podcast on that, maybe. Let's see. Lord, help and direct me here. Jesus' name. The flaming arrows mentioned in Ephesians 6.16 come as sudden and unexpected interruptions with images to capture our attention. So, what is faith? Faith is not so much a quality we possess, but a relationship in which we have access. Any movement towards God comprises two actions. First, we must believe that God is, and second, then, we affirm his nature as a verb, not as an adjective. Hebrews 11.6 says, For without faith it's impossible to please him. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists, and that he proves to be one who rewards. So faith pleases him, and we also need to believe that he rewards faith. So what is this, then, shield of faith? What is it? What does it maybe even consist of? Or what does it look like? Here we go. Taking up your shield of faith. There are two types of shields represented in the New Testament. One is a small circular shield shaped more like a large, round, wicker basket. The other one is a long, rectangular shield taken from the word door because of its shape. This is the kind of shield Paul speaks of when he says to take up the shield of faith. Not the small, circular one. The large one shaped like a door. The shield was probably about two feet wide, two to four feet 
and then about four feet long. It was made of two layers of wood glued together and covered first with linen and then with animal hide. It was bound on the top and the bottom with iron. Its purpose was to defend against incendiary missiles of the, in, of the enemy. Arrows dipped in pitch, set aflame, and launched. For further protection, the shield was soaked in water to extinguish any flame on contact. The shield not only protected the individual soldiers, but also many soldiers, when they, listen to this, many soldiers, when they stood together with their shields side by side and then moved forward towards the enemy, like a modern-day tank. These warriors banded together posed a great military threat. And thus, we talk about the door. Closing a door, opening a door. It's the year of the door. Really? So if it's a year of the door, we need to take up our shield of faith, by which we are able to extinguish the fiery darts and missiles of the enemy and join together with others. You ever seen the movie Gladiator? You'll get the picture there. There they're using the doors. And they also hold them up and they march together and they form a modern day tank. Yes, that's putting on a portion of the full armor of God by which we are able to extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Folks, I want us to grasp something. For us, in the, this moving forward, in this next whole part of this decade, we must go now on the offensive. There is territory for us to take. We have been put back on our heels, but we must now go on the offensive. We must maintain our devotional positions, our personal communions, communion with God. But how much is all power? Behold, I give you power and authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. It's all. But I wonder if it's all when we are all, when we come together. There is an, ex there is an exponential increase when we are in agreement together. They were together, together. There is exponential power when we are together, together. Yes, there is. And so what are some of the tricks of the enemy? Let's do this quick. Some of the tricks of the enemy are this, to get you to be alienated and isolated away from others, that you could do this all on your own, and you know that you can't. We need one another. And we need to put your door beside another door, besides another door, and under a door. Uh-huh. We are better together. So, do not allow the trick of isolationism and alienation to get you. That is a work of deception. Number two, observe the subtle difference between condemnation and conviction. Conviction is specific. Condemnation is vague. 
condemnation smears and pushes you down. Conviction does come with specifics and will bring sorrow unto repentance, but then lifts you up unto deliverance. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. And we must understand the difference between conviction and condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who follow after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We must put that phrase in there in the, from the book of Romans. Then I want us to know this trick, and there's a lot. The enemy speaks in first person to try to trick you, and, he will, and he's talking about himself. And he says, I feel bad today. And we hear it, and we go, yeah. I feel sick today. Yeah. I'm not welcomed at that church. Yeah. They don't want my gifts at that church. That's for sure. No one respects me there. They don't want to hear my voice there. They don't want my service. They don't want my gifts. In fact, they've rejected me. They don't even ever want me to come back again. And he's talking about himself, first person. That's only one example. I could give you several examples. And he's one of his tricks is he talks in the first person. And we think he's talking, those thoughts are about us. They're not. He's talking about himself. He's rejected, he's alone, he's not wanted, his gifts are not welcome. But you are, and you are important, and you are needed, and you are wanted, and you are valued. So make sure when you hear those lines, I am alone, I am not wanted, I am not needed. My gifts are not important. Make sure that you realize that those words are not about you. Those words are an inspiration because the devil is talking about himself. So Paul the Apostle said, we are not to be ignorant of the devil's schemes. So there's just some of them. Isolationism, condemnation versus conviction, and he talks in the first person because guess what? He loves talking about himself. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay. Now, so let's get out our fire extinguishers. Let's join them to other people and let's learn to. He has given, behold, he has given us power and authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the evil one and nothing shall in any means harm us and let's declare the word believe the word and let's war together let me lead us in a prayer from out of the triumph victorious spiritual warfare prayer father in heaven hallowed is your great name you are the almighty god and, and your son is the victorious champion. As a warrior in the strategic purposes of God in my generation, I put on the full armor of God and I clothe myself in Jesus' name and I take up the shield of faith. I declare that I am ready to Declare the good news of the gospel of peace, and I walk in the strong authority of your name, Lord Jesus Christ. I take up this shield of faith, enabling me to extinguish the fiery arrows of the evil one. And I put on my helmet of hope of salvation for such a time as this. I am now ready to take up the powerful sword of the Spirit, which is your word, and I proclaim, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will proclaim your word as Jesus did. I pray the word as the early apostles did, and I praise the word of God as the disciples did. 
and I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. This is my victorious spiritual warfare declaration for your glory, O oh God. Amen and amen. This is James W. Gall, and I agree. <laughs> and so do you. And we're going to be taking some time in a relaunch of the triumph, and I want you to go on this crusade with me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This is James W. Gall with our Global Prayer Storm, our Prayer Encounters podcast, and I invite you to be a facilitator and to be a part. Sign up at globalprayerstorm.com. Hey, you can make a difference. You really can. Amen, amen. God bless you.